burning sensation across my entire scalp. So I'm like, okay, this is something serious. Like, why is my scalp burning like this? Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm Paris Tavia, and today I'm telling you guys an interesting story about two times when I went bald. So stay tuned until the end if you want to get some hair growth tips. And trust me, I know a thing or two because, like I said, I was bald twice. Let's get into it. Okay, so let me set the stage. You know when you're a kid and you go outside and play and you cook food with stuff that you find outside, whether that be sticks, dirt, helicopter, leaves, shoot, bugs if you like to touch them. I wasn't that type of girl, but you get what I'm saying. Playing with all types of things. Me and my little sister Asia, that's my girl, that's my big kahuna, ride or die. We did everything together and we were always playing outside together, cooking stuff and we never thought about like hygiene when it came to playing outside. Literally we just played outside because we knew when we got in the house our mom was going to clean us up and what we did outside it didn't matter so me and asia thought it would be cool to make like a mud soup or something like that i just remember it was dirt with water and leaves and like we used a stick to mix it up like we used to be going ham we were chefs like you couldn't tell us nothing so we like we would do this every single day so of course we didn't think anything of it when we did it because nothing happened to us nothing ever went wrong we played we came in the house got cleaned up end of story that wasn't the end of story this one time so i guess this is what i'm guessing because i didn't know but i guess when i played in the dirt i would scratch my head continue playing and think like okay life will be fine my mom's gonna wash my hair like whatever but one time i did that and uh my hair started falling out and my mom's like okay something is not right like your hair is falling out you were getting scabbing in your scalp like it was so bad next thing you know i'm not even kidding you and i wish i had pictures i don't think i have pictures i'm gonna ask my mom if we have any pictures of this time but i had a ball spot about this big it was like the size of a tennis ball and a half like if you if you could think of that that was the size of a ball spot right here in my head and i think i was about between the ages of eight and ten so this is between the ages of where like pigtails was my thing like if you see me i had in pigtails i always wanted my hair in pigtails so when i got that ball spot i was livid because that was not a hairstyle that could be done in my head otherwise i would have been at school getting teased for being bought so me and my mom are literally trying to figure out like okay how did this happen in the first place is the hair gonna grow back is she gonna be bought for life like what's gonna happen so I, of course went to the dermatologist we got like medicine and stuff for the scalp it hurt so bad because it was scabbing like crazy the hair was not growing back for a minute like we were just terrified that for the rest of my life i was gonna have to deal with a tennis ball size ball spot so my mom was doing all these remedies and tricks the doctor said mm, we don't think her hair is gonna grow back so then my mom was like, no, my mom was determined, thank you mommy, but she was determined to grow my hair back, no matter what it took because it was painful. I remember her cleaning the ball spot all the time with like alcohol or something. I know alcohol isn't good for the hair, but it was necessary because it was literal scars on my head. And then using like cortisone, olive oil, all this type of stuff. And then my hair slowly started to come back and slowly, slowly, slowly. I don't even remember when it came back to its full length of like what it was at the time. But all in all, for the rest of my childhood, I didn't have a ball spot. So clearly my mom fixed it. But it was just a crazy time for me because you're a kid. You're not thinking about being bald. You're thinking about having fun going outside. I was scarred. Of course, I still was cooking up some good meals with Asia. But like, I was scarred. Like that process took... A few months to get back to normal or whatever but we figured that out and I didn't go bald again the hair in this section like around here is really different than all the hair around the perimeter it grew in differently the texture is different the curl pattern is different all that 
and this area of my scalp is still very sensitive so I have to take care of it a lot and watch it whatever so the second time I went bald was even crazier because this time it was when I was a freshman in college and Alexis if you're watching this child we went through too much because okay so the stage for this was I'm a freshman so I'm stressed out I'm anxious like more than ever because I'm in college like I don't know what's going on I don't know how I'm keeping my life together I'm just trying to take it day by day but it was stressful because i I took classes over the summer so I knew a little bit about how college was supposed to go but at the same time I had these expectations for myself that college was going to be going a certain type of way and when it wasn't going that way I was automatically stressed out so one day randomly I'm in our dorm bathroom and it's a shared bathroom so a lot of people can come in there at the same time I'm in my dorm bathroom and I feel like a bump in the back of my head and I'm thinking this is either a scab or this is something serious because it burned a little bit so even though I'm thinking it's a scab I'm like touching it touching it like I have a scab in my hair like this isn't right so I asked my friend Alexis like can you I'm gonna open my hair up take a picture of it and show me what it is so she shows me it and it's like this little tiny yellow scab thingy and I'm like okay scabs don't usually look like that like it looked like it was filled with something it was yellow so I'm like that's weird so what I thought that I should do and if this ever happens to you this is not what you should do I thought I should just oil it up the more I oil it the healthier my scalp's gonna be and I'll oil this scab and it'll go away that's not what happened so days went on days went on the scab started hurting more and I had a burning sensation across my entire scalp so I'm like okay this is something serious like why is my scalp burning like this I had no clue so I would just always be opening my scalp up taking pictures from the back and I'll insert some pictures if you are weak to the stomach or you don't like seeing nasty things skip past this part but I am about to insert some pictures right here of what it looks like just in case anybody else goes through something like this but okay okay everybody who wants to stay here's the pictures of what my scalp looked like it was so scary and I was just sitting here like I don't know what to do so my first thoughts was obviously tell my mom I tell my mom everything because I'd be scared and my mom's a nurse so I'm like she gotta know something that's going on so I sent a picture to my mom she's like go to the doctor so I go to the doctor and I'm explaining to them like I have a burning sensation all over my head it came randomly like I don't know what it is I don't know what's going on and the doctor is literally pressing on it does this hurt what do you think sir so I'm like yes it hurts so what is it and they're touching it touching it like oh that's a cyst I'm like okay this is ringing some alarms in my head because I remember senior year of high school I had got a cyst on my body though and it was because from stress and I had to go to the doctor and they had to drain it so I'm like okay I now I'm stressed again except it's on my head so it's 10 times worse than when it was on my body so my first thing is like they're about to drain this boy on my head and it's gonna hurt so bad but I guess when they're on your scalp they can't drain them I'm not too sure because I didn't but they gave me a bunch of medicine and he told me like you have to wash your hair and I'm nervous to wash it because it hurts so bad and then finally like the medicine helped it clear it up the medicine took away the pain the medicine caused it to drain out and all that type of stuff like within from the inside out so I'm geeked I'm like the sis is gone okay the sis left and it it took all my hair with it so this ball spot was a lot smaller than the first ball spot from when I was like between the ages of 8 and 10 however this one was traumatic because I'm like is this gonna grow back because okay so the first boss fight I didn't really have anything to do with it like my mom took care of it so I don't know how it felt my mom wouldn't let me touch it I didn't really know how it looked because I was a kid and I would try to look at it you know with the mirror like this 
but I genuinely don't really remember what that looked or felt like but this one I'm older so I'm in control of everything I'm touching it and when I tell you the skin was so smooth like I don't even know how to describe that smooth skin because people would be like smooth like a baby's bottom no it was smoother than that the skin was so smooth so with our doctor we have like a portal portal where you can sorry where you can um message them so i go message my doctor like hey doc um my skin my sis went away but the skin is very smooth how long is it going to take for my hair to grow back i'm not asking is my hair going to grow back i'm saying how long is it going to take he messaged me back like great i'm so excited that everything worked for you um but i'm sorry to tell you your hair might not grow back so i'm like okay this is the second time i went bald and you about to tell me my hair's not gonna grow back for a second time i'm like okay so i text my mom i'm like the doctor says my hair's probably not gonna grow back she texts me like girl it probably will i grew your hair back the first time we can grow it back again because the doctors before said my hair was gonna grow back so i'm like okay so the first thing that she told me it was cortisone and i would just put that on my scalp so that it wouldn't itch Somebody's arguing outside my window. Ciao. Okay. Where was I? She had me get the cortisone. So then I started putting cortisone mask up every single day. And just hoping and praying like, please hair grow back. Please hair grow back. So. So then after with the cortisone, after using the cortisone, I know I started using like an oil blend. And... The oil blend that I usually use is the same oil blend that I always talk about in all my videos and on my blog. So I'll link that below again. But it's just a mix of oils that I use to grow my hair or keep it healthy, you should say. But really, black castor and olive oil were the top two that I was really using during this time of dealing with the ball spot. Um, so using those oils and just to kind of take care of the spot, but also leaving it alone um the spot bothered me for a few months because the hair just wouldn't grow so i had to work my certain hairstyles and at this point i was also transitioning my hair as well from being heat damaged to being fully curly and natural and if you guys want a video on that comment down below because i'll share that story as well but so my hair was looking a mess let me just say that my hair was looking a mess it was not curly at all looking crazy and i had a bald spot and whenever i i like middle parts so i'll put my hair in the middle and next thing you know the hair will open up to where you can see the bald spot so i had to figure out hairstyles to wear so that you could see my bald spot whenever i went to class thank god it was winter because i could just put a hat on but i was going through it so when my hair finally grew back it also did grow in a different texture so this middle area a crazy spot for me so i always try to take care of it and treat it differently than all this hair around here just because it did grow back differently from the two times that i lost the hair right there but regardless it grew back so that's all that matters and i'm grateful that it grew back and uh, i just want to say like if you ever grow through I say grow through something no you grow your hair but if you ever go through something like this don't think that like your worth is through your hair obviously these were hard times for me and i wanted my hair to grow back because it was a painful time to be walking around with big old boss spots in the back of your head but at the end of the day like hair is not your entire life and uh, i had to learn that obviously the hard way but that's something i had to learn so just because you see me with my big curly hair don't think that like it's always perfect or that i didn't have to go through stuff to get it the way that it was so yes that's just a little encouragement because i know sometimes people be like i'm bald today you got so much hair i'm like yeah but trust me girl i was actually bored so okay okay so now that we got through those two crazy stories about my boss spots i'm gonna give you guys a couple tips that i have for growing your hair and like i said trust me i know a thing or two because this hair wasn't just like this from being young to getting older 
my hair actually fell out twice so i know a little something about growing some hair so i actually wrote my tips down in my youtube journal and i'm going to share them with you now so the first tip that i have is to wash your hair and i wash my hair every two weeks the benefits of washing your hair is that it removes the buildup and oils and pollution from the air you never know what can get caught into your hair so you always want to make sure that you're taking your time to wash it out and when you're washing make sure you focus all into the scalp because your scalp health is super important and you don't want to dry your hair you know like to the ends or another good thing is to use shampoos that include some moisturizers so the Taraji P Henson shampoo that I used in my last video worked really well to not only clean the scalp but moisturize the hair at the end but I also use medicated shampoo as well to help with my scalp because as I'm always saying I be having scalp issues and I be having to take care of them so the second tip that I have is to oil your scalp and oil it often obviously if you have the cyst issue like I did please do not put oil on it go to the doctor and do whatever they recommend but oiling your scalp really helps to incorporate moisture into your hair and make sure that your scalp is extra healthy especially i have braids so i try to oil my scalp every day just to make sure when i take these braids out my hair is super healthy and not dry the third tip that i have is to massage your scalp and you should do this with the oil so when you oil your scalp you put the oil in and then you go ahead and massage it in <laughs> massaging your scalp helps promote healthy hair growth and it increases hair thickness and it also just feels really good to do so try to do that every time you oil your scalp so probably every day tip number four is to reduce the use of heat in your hair and i'm not saying reduce heat as in go natural i'm saying reduce the amount of time you use heat so if straightening your hair is what you like to do try not to straighten it every day or you know try to space out the amount of times that you strain your hair and if you are natural well not natural if you have curly hair try not to use heat too much because using heat can damage your hair and it does stop your hair from growing trust me i had to learn that the hard way and uh, that's just something that a lot of people know but might as well share tip number five is to be patient and be kind to your hair because honestly a lot of hair growth comes with time and a lot of hair growth comes with not doing too much to your hair so not constantly dyeing it not constantly pulling it and just trying to do a bunch of different crazy stuff to your hair i try to just be really minimal with my hairstyles when my hair is curly i wash it every two weeks and then i do a style for that time and i'll use the i'll do like two styles for the two weeks before i wash it again and then right now i have a protective sorry right now i have a protective styling so just do whatever but please be patient don't expect your hair to change overnight like i said i'll do a hair transformation video because the curls that i have now baby four years ago i did not have those curls so it took a lot of time to get to where i am and it took a lot of time to get the length that i'm at also should i do a length check video let's do let's do it all let's do it all but anyways so please be patient with your hair growth and don't compare your hair journey to other people's number six is choose products that work for your hair type don't choose products just because you see the biggest youtubers using them don't choose hair products just because you see me using them you have to choose products that work specifically for your hair because a lot of times you'll try stuff and your hair will let you know that it doesn't like them and you'll keep using them knowing that your hair doesn't like it i know my hair doesn't like a product the product will literally sit on top of my hair and just be like and what and i'm like okay and that's how i figure out that products don't work for me or sometimes your hair changes products like when i first went natural my hair loved cantu now i don't really use cantu because my hair would not penetrate cantu at all allow your hair to run its course and allow it to figure out what products it meshes well with and don't be afraid to try stuff but also big thing don't think you have to spend a lot of money to figure out what products your hair likes you can get samples you can um buy one product at a time like literally what i did was i would buy one product see if my hair liked it if it didn't like it i'm using it but <laughs> you don't have to do that but that's what i did or i used to get the little samples so like it'll be like this big or like 
this big and then obviously you can tell from that little sample pack if your hair likes the products or not that way you will save money over time because you won't have to try products or try to watch people on youtube who have a similar hair texture as you um because a lot of times the same products that they use may just work for you and you will end up saving a lot of money my issue was i had a hard time finding people on youtube who had hair texture like mine because my hair um it spirals and it's kinky so i have like a blend of textures but also like even though my hair spirals is very coarse so it was hard for me to find people who even though they have the same curl type as me have the same texture as me so make sure you like look around try to figure that out and don't just buy products just because it claims that it's going to work for your hair type because they could be lying and tip number seven this is kind of like a do it or don't is gummies i personally take hair skin and nail gummies and women's multivitamins and uh supposedly they help your hair grow i'm not gonna say that they help your hair grow but if you feel like that's something that could work for you i would take them however i'm not a doctor so i don't know but take them if you want to i feel like i see it different in my nails i said different i'm sorry I feel like I see a difference in my nails with the gummies, but I don't know about my hair. So we'll see. And then I have a couple tips for my mama because like I said, she is the reason why my hair grew back the first time. So her first tip is to wash your hair once a week. And I said I wash my hair every two weeks, but honestly, everybody's scalp is different. So figure out your scalp and how many times it needs to be washed. Um, whenever I'm having scalp issues, once a week is what I do because I need to make sure my scalp is super clean and in order whenever my scalp gets a little too bit itchy or dry but typically I wash every two weeks my mom said to use olive oil olive oil was our savior when my hair fell out the first time so definitely use that she said also use shea butter like I said I had the scars and everything shea butter helped get rid of the scars and also helped with the growth of my hair and then my mom said to keep your ends trimmed and that's such an important tip because a lot of us love length to the point where we will keep crusty dead ends at the bottom and that's not good at all because you be walking around looking crazy you really be walking around looking crazy and uh i don't be wanting to get my ends trimmed because i be loving the length too but i always get them trimmed anyway because i'm not trying to walk around looking crazy and i want my hair to grow so that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified every time I post. And comment down below what hair videos you want next. Or tell me what your favorite tip was. Or just laugh at this video because your girl was bored two times. Two times. What a shame a lot of people don't know this though i don't be trying to air out my business because y'all don't be needing to know but i'm gonna share with y'all i'm gonna share i'm just playing but okay thank you so much for watching bye